Surfers, the Shakers, the people making a difference who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail, to take a risk, to learn. You know them and aspire to be like them. And you can because there's always room for greatness. Apply today. University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness. for the University of Technology, Jamaica. We'd like to welcome all our university officials joining us today. Our acting president, Professor Colin Giles, University Registrar, Mrs. Mercedes Dean, and all our academic and administrative staff. Welcome. We'd like to extend a hearty and warm welcome to all the parents, guardians, and spouses of our new and transfer students. And lastly, but certainly not least, all our new and transfer students, we welcome you. We are happy that you have joined us today. We are glad, despite being unable to gather as we normally would, given the circumstances facing the world, that we are still able to connect by the means of technology. After all, we are the University of Technology. We are happy that you are safe in the comfort of your homes. My name is Danielia Wadsworth, Director of Spiritual Development for the UTEC JA Students' Union Council for the academic year 2020-21. And I will be your moderator for today's proceedings. We hope that you will be blessed, feel inspired, and have a wonderful time with us during the segment. Thank you for joining us. And at this time, we will have the scripture reading. And our scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 121, verses 1 to 8. And it reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. And... If you're just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the commencement service for the week of welcome 2020. I am Daniela Wadsworth, and at this time, Mrs. Carol Richards, university chaplain, will be coming to us to do a short meditation and invocation. Following the invocation, the praise team will come to take us into a time of praise and worship. Thank you.
morning. King David penned the words in Psalm 145. I will praise you, my God and King, and bless your name each day and forever. Great is Jehovah. Greatly praise him. His greatness is beyond discovery. Let each generation tell its children what glorious things he does. I will meditate about your glory, splendor, majesty, and miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds shall be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will tell about how good you are and sing about your righteousness. Your take-home for this morning and this short meditation are four things. One, God is infinite. The prophet Isaiah said, Who else has held the oceans in his hands and measured off the heavens with his ruler? Who else knows the weight of all the earth and weighs the mountains and the hills? Who can advise the spirit of the Lord or be his counselor or give him counsel? God's infinity means that he has no limits, no boundaries, and no end. That means his love, mercy, and all other qualities are unlimited in their scope of expression. God is self-sufficient. We as humans create things out of something that God has already created. God as creator created everything from nothing. We cannot even imagine or understand nothing. We have never seen nothing. God was not created. He exists outside of the created order. Thirdly, God is eternal. For us humans, time defines boundaries. We mark the point of time based on our birth and death. We count history in terms of years and ages. We cannot begin to imagine what life is like without time, beyond the boundaries of time. God has neither beginning nor end. And fourthly, God is self-sufficient. Every living thing needs a constant supply of food and air to remain alive. God has no needs. God cannot die, except when he came in the person of Jesus Christ to solve the greatest pandemic ever. This pandemic has eternal consequences. It is deadly. In fact, it is eternally deadly. And as God said in his word in John 3, 16, for God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is our only hope for this and every pandemic. And he is your hope to take you through your university years, to take you through your financial crisis, to take you through your need for resources like laptops and phones to be able to manage the online situation. I want to invite you to pray with me this morning, wherever you are, to pray with me as I pray for you. I will invite you to even join with me if you would like to invite Christ into your life this morning, to start your new year, your new academic year. Let us pray together. And if you would like to invite Christ, you can just simply repeat this prayer after me because that's how I'm going to pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, you alone are God and there is no other. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my heart today to receive you as my Savior and my Lord. The only God who could solve every situation in my life. Take control of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me eternal life. Oh Lord, I give my life to you today. Come in and make me the person you want me to be. And Father, I declare over all the students this year, your peace that passes all understanding your provision, your protection, your direction, and your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can the people of God lift up holy hands right now and just shout hallelujah. If you are grateful to be in his presence once more, why not lift up your hand and just take a minute and just worship God right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. 
God, once again, we come into your presence with expectancy in our hearts. And God, we know you're going to bless us. So we lift our hands in the sanctuary and we give you the glory, the honor, and praise. Come on, come on. Hey. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. Come on. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will say. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Sing yes. We will praise you for the rest One of our days. One more time. Day. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. your feet and let's glorify God. Hallelujah. Take it up, take it up. See, we clap. We clap our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands. We clap our hands to give you the glory. Come on and clap your hands we this morning. We clap our hands to give you the praise. And we will. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. See, yes. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Ah, uh, come on, Zion. I know you got a better praise than that for my this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Can we take it up one more time? We sing a song. We sing a song in the sanctuary. Come on. We sing a song to give you the glory. We sing a song. We sing a song to give you the praise. And we will. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes. We will praise you for the rest Let's of call our days. Let's call his name and say Jesus. We Join us and sing yes this yes, morning. Lord, for the rest of our days. Oh, my also sing. Yes. We praise him this yes, morning. Yes, Lord, for the rest of come our days. Come on, Mikey, can I say? Yes. Come on, come on, sing yes. Yes, Lord, for the rest now of our days. Now everybody join and say yes. yes. Say. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. We sing yes. yes. Come on, agree with us and sing yes. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. And right now, as we go into the next song, it's a really easy song. It says, mighty is the great I am. Mighty is the rock upon which I stand. So come on, everybody, let's get up right now, and we're going to acknowledge the mighty God that we all serve this morning. Come on, come on. I want to see you moving your shoulders, tapping your feet. Hallelujah. Mighty is a great time. 
Take it down a bit, and we're gonna just do this one. It's really, it's really an easy song, and it's so applicable in this season that we know who we serve and that we understand who our God is and that we know His name. Yes. So it simply says, Jehovah is your name. He is a mighty warrior. He is great and undefeated in every and any battle. Jehovah is His name. So wherever you are right now, if you're in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your car, just take a moment and just lift up your hands and let's acknowledge the greatness of Jehovah right now. Oh God, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Red. 
Everybody lift your hands and acknowledge that you're Jehovah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how majestic is the name of Jesus. All right. 
So immediately following this song, the next voice you'll be hearing is that of our guest speaker, Bishop Leslie Pinnock. Bishop Pinnock is a purpose-driven individual who is committed to his relationship with God, which is the driving force in his life. He is an ordained bishop with the New Testament Church of God. He is married to Lorreen for the last 20 years, and the union has produced two sons, Samuel and Joel, 14 and 11 respectively. He presently serves as the National Youth and Discipleship Director for Jamaica, a position he held for the last six years, and has recently been appointed pastor of the Escarment Road New Testament Church of God, which takes the effect September 1st, 2020. Bishop Pinnock enjoys playing and watching basketball and rapping with young people. So after this item, this song, Bishop Pinnock will be the next person you'll be seeing on this podium. Hallelujah. Yes, good evening, good evening, you take nights, much more the entire family. You know, so today just being here in your orientation, first year is everybody all around listening. Just want to encourage you guys, you know, just to be a star in this moment with this election. All right? So just be blessed. All right? What my eyes can see, I still believe everything spoken to me. There is no word that will come back void. I will trust the report of the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie. Every need he will supply. I will wait, I will not remove, I believe, I believe, I will trust in you while I'm waiting, I'm getting stronger, my fate is rising, and I will run on while I'm waiting, I'm lifting up on wings as eagles, I believe I will trust in you, oh, oh, oh. Just in you, just in you, I'll trust you. Just to share that short testimony. I'm an industrial engineering student from a faculty of engineering. And I, I've spent six years, you know, being here. And you know, for my first year, it was very challenging. But I want to tell you, you can be a star in this moment. I went through, put in the work, studied, stay up here all night. And I'm coming out, you know as a star, so you can be one too. So if you can't see it, just know that God can take it through it. All right? All right. So what my eyes can see, I still believe everything spoken to me. There is no word that will come back, boy. And I will trust the report of the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie. 
every need he will supply i will wait i will not move i believe i believe i will trust in you so while i'm waiting i'm getting stronger my fate is rising and i will run on while i'm waiting i'm gonna lift up on wings as he goes i believe i will trust in you trust in you I will run and I will not be weary and I will walk and I will not faint I will rise up on wings as he go I believe I believe I will trust in you I will run and I will not be weary I will walk and I will not faint I will rise up on wings as he goes. I believe, I believe, I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Let me say a pleasant good morning to one and all. It is such a delight to be with you this morning. God is indeed an amazing and an awesome God. When we've listened to all of the songs in testimony that had been done, it is indeed truly wonderful what the Lord has done. And it is truly wonderful what he will continue to do, even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of this pandemic, even throughout this school year, upcoming school year. This morning... I want to give God all the honor and the praise and glory for this opportunity to share God's word with you. And so, as I do so, I want to first and foremost take this opportunity to greet uh, the acting president of this university, Professor Colin Jazz, thank you for the opportunity, sir, to be with this distinguished group of individuals today. We also, I also want to greet University Registrar, Mrs. Mercedes Deans. Greetings to all the faculty and the staff, to the alumni, the students. Uh, new students and returning students. I want to also take this opportunity to greet the parents and guardians and the friends and well-wishers of this noble institution. I want to greet all those who are online and those who are watching. It is so good that you are with us today. As I share with you this morning, on this theme, this is your star in moment. Your star in moment. It is a fascinating thought that I believe is really and truly something to think about. There is a portion of scripture I want to read that is taken from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, one that I consider to be a very familiar portion of Scripture. 
of course, it goes from verse 32 uh, all the way down to 40. It says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of the Philistines whom or your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. And he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its ear, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Verse 38, then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened fastened on his sword over the tunic and turned and tried walking around. Because he was not used to them, I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Verse 40 and ending. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Father, here are your words. They are already blessed. What we do not know, teach us. What we are not, make us. And make your name to be great in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Of of course, there are always things and people and situations that will seek to intimidate us and to cause us to fear. Of course, this is something that threatens our success and ability to accomplish your goals and your dreams. As I say that, I can think back as a little boy living or growing up on a street where there would be one of those bad dogs on the street. And of course, this dog, once their gate would be open, would just simply lay at the gate. And you would be so afraid to even pass the gate to go about your business. And so it would cause a kind of fear and doubt inside of you that would sometimes cripple you. Of course, we would refuse to pass in those times. Of course, there are those of phobias or phobias that causes us to choke up so badly at times that it leads us even to panic attacks. Of course, there are those things that threatens our very success. It threatens whom we are and what God has in store for us. The story nestled in the book of First Samuel chapter 17 from verses 37, from verses 17 to from verses 32 to verse 40 captures this vividly. The story is about a young man whom God has illustrious plans for. God's plans for him was to be the king over Israel. God's plans, I want you to know, for each 
of us today is one that is renowned. It is one that is special. For all of us, all of our university students, those who are new and incoming, and those who are returning students, I want you to know that God has a plan for you, and that plan is renowned. And I'm excited just to see in time what this will manifest itself to be. This time, this season, this pandemic is real. This time and season and pandemic is real. It reminds us all that for every victory, there will be a challenge. It reminds us that for every win, there will be a fight. It reminds us that for every mountaintop experience, there has to be a climb. It reminds us that for every David, there is a Goliath to be slain. I want to declare to you that it might not necessarily be easy, but always remember that the Lord God of heaven is with you. Benjamin, Disraeli says, and I quote, there is no education like adversity. There's no education like adversity. There are certainly some lessons I feel that as students of this noble institution here in the 21st century that we can learn from David's star in moment right there in the valley of Sokoth and Elah. 50 miles southwest of Jerusalem. I believe that there is something that you and I can learn from this text. As we look at them, the first one I want you to take note of as we choose to star in this moment is I want us to remember our anointing. When we look at the text in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 13, it reminds us that God spoke to Samuel and instructed him to go down to Jesse's house and to choose the next king. Of course, as we fast track to the 17th chapter, we recognize that this young man, he steps into his star in moment. I'm not sure if when he stepped into this moment, if he recognized that this was going to be his moment, but the text declares that he steps onto the scene of something that was going to be historic. You see, you are not here by chance. This is what we call divine providence. God's plan for you are never Accidental. God's plans for you are intentional. God's plans for you are focused and directed. Don't forget that God is your source. As you arrive on this scene, as you arrive in this moment, as you arrive on this stage and continue to walk in it, irrespective of what COVID-19 is presenting, I want you to understand that you are in this moment. God has chosen you for this moment and you are ready to conquer it. And so I want you to simply walk in it. Secondly, in the text, as we see that David refused to listen to his critics. He refused to listen to his critics. David steps into his star in moment. And as he steps 
steps into this moment in verse 28 to 30 of course there were critics you see you are not here by chance like I said but I want you to understand that as you step into your star in moment critics are real critics are real there are those who are going to be there to criticize you they are sometimes the most unlikely of persons that you are expecting ah, and come from the most unlikely of places they sometimes can sound louder than the encouragers and they certainly do have a purpose but I want you to understand that as you step into your moment and as you choose to star in this moment it is important that you not allow the sound of your critics to become so loud and dominant in your ears that you lose your focus. The text says that David's brothers criticize him and they ask why are you here but I wish somebody who when you are challenged in one way shape or form this school year that your response will be that of God has providentially led me to this point and I am in my starring moment and nothing is going to deter me. Understand thirdly that you should never forget your past victories. Verses 34 and 37 looks at something critical as David is speaking with the men around him who are lined up, who are on the front line. The text says that Saul got news of it, who was the king. And Saul summoned David. And as he summoned David, the text says, of course, he responded that you are just a child. You're just a young man. You can't fight this giant. He is a warrior. He was bred for this. You are but a boy. And the text says that the boy looked at the king and his response was simply priceless he says king I take care of my father's sheep and there was one time when guess what a lion came and then he gives the story of the time when a bear came and he talked about how he delivered them from the mouth of the lions and the bear. I want to declare to the students of UTEC today that you should never forget your past victories. Remember them. Every moment in your life thus far has led you to this point and prepared you as well for this stage, for this moment. You you should never forget it. Do not underestimate or undervalue your past experiences, victories, or failure. They were not just for nothing. You will be able to function in this COVID time. You will be able to stand up and to learn and to finish and to accomplish your goals and your dreams in this time. It may be rough. It may be different. It may be difficult. But understand that this is your moment to shine. It is in this moment that God would have ordained that you are here and you will shine. Fourthly, don't panic. Verse 38 to 39 of the text tells us that we should not panic. Listen to the text. Now what you are capable, know what you are capable of and I want you when you do that to draw on those resources. 
it is. Know what you're capable of and draw on those resources. They are valuable to you and they are many. I guarantee you that in the midst of all of the difficulty that may be surrounding you, there are resources that is available to every single student and your job as a star in this moment is to tap into, is to utilize, is to allow these resources to become that which will enable you to achieve that which is your God-given goal. Then fifthly, I want you to reject and resist intimidating threats. Verse 42 and verse 47. As David faced this pandemic, as David faced this giant, as David faced this insurmountable challenge. Listen to me. He heard the voice of this challenge declaring to him, am I a dog that you send a boy to me? Lord God Almighty. The text says that he was not intimidated by anything or anyone. David recognized that all lives matter. He recognized that he was a star in this moment. He recognized that God would have called him for this time and this season. And so those of you who are listening to me who may feel somebody may be trying to or would like to intimidate you or something, I want to challenge you to remember whose you are and why you are here. Remember that this is your time. Remember that God has called you for this time and this season in the book of Esther. I, Esther would have been challenged. How do you know that you were not brought to the kingdom for such a time as this? Irrespective of what may seek to intimidate or scare or fear you, I want you to live in this moment. These are what we call scare tactics that you should allow, you should not allow to impose you but to bounce off you and to give you the energy to go on the sixth thing we see in the text is that you must represent God in this moment represent God in this moment if God is the one who providentially led you to this point then you have a responsibility to represent him. Verse 42 and 47. To, pre, to represent God is to go in God's strength. To represent God, it requires you to not just verbalize your belief, but it requires you to also follow through with the appropriate action. It was Abraham Lincoln who once said, and I quote, character is like a tree and reputation like a shadow. Aye. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. The tree is the real thing. Then number seven, take on the challenge. This is your star in moment. Let nothing or no one deter you. Let nothing or no one or no situation hamper or hinder your progress. Allow nothing to impede you as you allow God to use you in this moment to accomplish accomplish his will and purpose for your life. And then number eight and finally realize your skills. Realize your talents. Realize your gifts. Verse 49 of the text. The text says that as David moved towards the valley, David picked 
up some stones. Five to be exact. The text says five smooth stones. And as he did that, I want you to understand something. You are here for this time and season. Use your gifts to accomplish your dreams, irrespective of the obstacles that are ahead of you. David, as he picked up this stone, just in case he missed the first time, I think was in his mind, he ensured that he had more than one stone. Because the truth is, sometimes we miss. Sometimes we go off course. Sometimes we are distracted. The text said he had Five. So just in case the first one did not connect, he had some others to go on. I want to declare to the students of this noble institution that you have been given gifts and talents that are many. The kind that you can use in a tremendous way. As I close, I close with this quote. Again, understand that you have a responsibility to use your gifts and talents. And even if you fail, get up and try again. It was the, the late Nelson Mandela who once said, and I quote, Don't judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times... I fall down and get up. Don't judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got up. As you use your skills and talents and gifts. In this time and this season. In the midst of all of this confusion. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this uncertainty, I want to encourage you as students who are providentially here that you should remember your anointing, that you should, ref be, you should refuse to listen to the critics. You should never forget your past victories because they will help you today. Do not panic reject and resist the intimidating threats represent God in this space and time take on the challenge and realize those things that you have within you and so God even now in the name of Jesus I commit the students Lord for this academic year 2020-2021 Lord God I commit not just the students, but the faculty and staff. And I ask that you, O oh God, will guide by your spirit. Grant, O oh God Almighty, your people the victory. To, O oh God, experience that which you have given into us. We tell you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and all the best for this school year. We would like to thank the guest speaker for those powerful words and thank you for tuning in to this session. We invite you to stay with us as the day has not yet come to an end. The next session will commence at 10.30 a.m. with the orientation for the parents, guardians, and spouses. At that time, your host will be Mrs. Sharon Anderson Roach, College Administrator for the College of Business and Management. Have a blessed day and see you at 10.30 a.m. right here on the University of Technology Jamaica YouTube platform link.